happy super bowl sunday everybody so by the time this video is finished uploaded most likely the super bowl has already started and that we're already into the halftime show by the time this video is uploaded because we're once again going to have tons of news to discuss in this news of the week episode and that i will have to switch the board one more time because of it and that this is also going to be one of those news of the week episode where it's going to be 30 plus minute long but the first news i'm going to talk about in terms of this long list of news that i'm going to be discussing in this news of the week episode involved with the revised cba which i did a video back on friday talking about how there's got to be a huge sigh of relief not just around mls but also myself with the fact that that the the league and the mls pa has finally agreed on a tentative agreement on this revised cba which therefore prevent the, the league to potentially heading into a lockout in this regular season but i also mentioned that there is still some finalization that needs to be done with this revised cba and that the mlspa is actually doing a ratification vote in terms of this revised cba that will last until monday and because we still have these finalization that needs to be done that's why there is still no official update on the full detail of this revised CBA. Now, I have heard some rumors in terms of what the, the full detail of this revised CBA is going to look. But I'm not going to kind of report it in this News of the Week episode because I want to wait until there's the, the official statement from either the MLSPA or MLS or even them release an article on their website talk, talking about the full detail of this revised CBA. And once they do that, I, of course, will do a a video talking about that now moving on in terms of the next news involved dc united who decided to hire former and assistant head coach nicholas Brito as their assistant head coach and this one shouldn't be a big surprise consider dc is looking to kind of get their coaching staff to pretty much come from the belgium league and that they decided to get an assistant head coach that is also so come from the same same league as their current head coach Hernan lasada from the belgium league and you know as much as i know there's a lot of dc fans are very excited of how this team is going to look and they're excited of what this new coaching staff can bring bring to i feel like there is still a little bit concerned with the fact that this team hasn't really made a, a, a lot of changes to their their lineup and that one of the things that i i talked about with dc that they desperately need to address heading into this offseason has to be their attack and especially since a couple of days ago they they of course decided to send probably their best player on the attack in paul Ariola on loan to swansea they need to eventually find a replacement for for him because if they don't find a replacement for him and they put the same attack that is going to be heading into this season then that is or the same attack that they feel last season and put it put it the same for this upcoming season yeah this team is going to struggle in ter terms of scoring goals and that you know judging by the fact that they they really ha have haven't been linked with any of these these attacking players there's got to be some concern right now if you're a dc fan with the way way that it seemed like the front office are only addressing pro one of the bigger problem they have which is coaching but kind of forget that they also have another big problem on their hand which is which is score scoring goals heading into next season now moving forward in terms of the next news and speaking of scoring goals and also on the attack well fc cincinnati they definitely made a big splash in terms of trying to improve their attack by deciding to to sign sign bernard from sao paulo fc and i i heard that they are splashing 12 million dollar to sao paulo fc in order to sign their 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 main striker and this is definitely a lot of money for a team team to try to to sign an attacker and it is going to be one of the most expensive signing once this deal does have and it kind of also makes sense because i've heard that this is a guy that not only he's a very talented the player but he's actually been linked with some european move and that there are a couple of european team like arsenal that is actually linked for him to 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 get him from sao paulo and the fact that fc cincinnati is looking to win this bit just to to show you how they, they are so desperate in terms of of having some attacking talent and that they're really hoping that this is going to be a, the guy that's going to solve the 
the issue that they have on the attack. Especially how later on in this news of the week, I'm also going to be talking about another player that is probably a a big surprise that after spending one year in the Middle East, that he's actually going to be coming back to MLS. And the last team you would have thought that he would be linked with when he come back to MLS would actually be FC Cincinnati. But... Uh, of course, we'll talk about later on once we get to the r- rumor part of this news of the week. But moving on, in terms of the next news, involved DC United once again, who th- they decided to sign their number five overall pick, Michael DeShiel, to a-, a contract. Now, I'm pretty sure he's probably not going to get a lot of minutes with DC, and they're probably going to be sending him to Loudoun United, their USL affiliate, because, you know, you know he is he is a guy that is a defender and that and that DC doesn't really have a, a lot of problem right now with with their their defense and they have relatively good depth in terms of of that department but if if this guy does do well well with their affiliate team maybe he could potentially get promoted late later that season or maybe even heading into next season he could be promoted to to the senior roster but we've seen many times before when teams decided to sign their super draft pick they usually mean they send them down to the usl or maybe put them on the fringe fringe of poten- potentially making the depth chart or even in the lower part of the depth depth chart right now but yeah we shall see actually if that of course is going to be the case and that that again i feel like most likely he's going to be be sent down to the usl to get a couple of 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 play playing time before he actually get promoted back to the senior team. Now Austin FC have signed Aaron Schoenfeld off of free agency, and you know it's kind of a, a shame the fact that that when Aaron Schoenfeld was signed with Minnesota, it kind of didn't quite work out. I mean, I remember when Schoenfeld first started playing for for the Loons, I thought he was definitely a decent player, but unfortunately he kind of never worked out as an impact sub. And speaking of impact sub. That's probably going to be the same role that he's going to get with Austin FC because I'm pretty sure he's probably not going to be a starter for this team and that it's probably just going to be a guy that that they're going to maybe bring bring him off the bench and maybe maybe with him going to to a new team and again I know I'm going to bring bring up the classic cliche of a change of scenery but you know maybe this could be a case where maybe a change of scenery would 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 actually help help him and maybe be can can made himself to be kind of an in, impact sub for this team that Austin FC really wants to, to get but you know best of luck for Aaron Schoenfeld in terms of how he does with Austin FC as again this is another example of Austin continue to boost their, their attacking depth and especially that number nine nine position and speaking of number nine position moving on in terms of the next news involving the Red Bulls decided to sign a new number nine this time in in a Brazilian number nine named Fabio Roberto Gomez Neto on loan from Austin FC, which is a team that is in the second division in Brazil. Now, I'm, I know that a lot of Red Bulls fans are probably going to say that this was a meh kind of signing and a signing that they're not going to be overly excited because of the fact that he comes from the second division in Brazil. But that being said, as a Quakes fan, I remember when we decided to sign, sign Jutson and there was kind of... A little bit of a subdue kind of excitement in terms of signing him because he came from the second division in Brazil. But it turns out he he not only turns out to be a great player for us, but he was actually, actually our key engine in terms of the midfield. And I'm not saying that that kind of same fortune can, can be the same case with the Red Bulls getting a, a hidden gem of a player in the second division of Brazil. But I, I can under, understand why Red Bulls fans are not not overly excited the fact that their solution of of potentially not putting Tom Barlow as their their starting number nine is getting a guy that is from the second division of Brazil and that they they hope that he is going to be a guy that's going to solve their issue in terms of the attacking roles the Red Bulls suffered last season but never know we'll see how he's going to do with the this team and whether or not if he can can be one of those hidden gem kind of South American player that the Red Bulls were able to snatch up and develop them into him into a good decent player but moving on in terms of the next news involved Montreal who who they were probably the busiest team in these last couple of days in terms of making some signings as they actually made made three signings in a span of 24 hours 
Uh, first signing Argentine midfielder Joaquin Torres on loan with Newell Old Boys. And then they, of course, signed Egyptian midfielder Ahmad Hamidi on loan from, from Egyptian club Al Goudi FC. Before finally complete the signing of a journeyman, but also a Norwegian international forward, Jung Johnson from Usan Hyundai. Now, all these players that, that I just mentioned, you know, I'm not quite sure. Are they going to be decent in MLS? Because some of these players are definitely coming from from a league that I don't think a lot of MLS team have tried to sign these players from these leagues especially uh talk about this Egyptian midfielder Ahmad Hamidi I mean I think this Montreal might be the first team that actually decide to to sign a player from the Egyptian league and I also talk about how they decide to also sign a journeyman in Jim Johnson from Usan Hyundai although even though Usan Hyundai is considered one of the best best club not only in the K korean league but also in the in in the in these asian leagues so maybe they have got themselves a good kind of player in terms of in in terms of partnering rumel kyoto in that in that four position and also they of course did sign sign probably one of the more notable ball player that came from a note or they signed one of those players that came from a more notable club that is Joaquin Torres from Newell Old Boys. But even then, I I think he actually didn't play with Newell Old Boys. And he was actually spending on loan with a club in, in Greece. So, yeah, it will be very interesting to see if any of these players is going to, to do well. And that I didn't really get a lot of information of any of these guys. But, you know, Montreal is hoping that that, of course, is the case. And that, you know, they hope that with all these signings that they've made this offseason might be a way to not only booster their depth in terms of their team, but actually maybe find some quality player that can can evaluate, elevate this this team to be a playoff team heading into next season. I mean, uh, how many times we've seen, seen before where just because you decide to su sign a bunch of players during the offseason and become one of those teams that is busy in terms of, of boosting your depth or even potentially sign players to fix some, some weak spots that you, you have on in your your roster doesn't mean the fact that it can always always be successful so we shall see whether or not if all all three of these players is going to find find some success with montreal or even get some game time with this team now the portland timbers have signed eric willinson to a multi-year contract and this is probably a no-brainer considering the fact that eric willinson was really really a good player for the Timbers and he kind of had his breakout during the MLS is back tournament and because of that the Timbers reward him to a multi-year contract which I believe that is going to go all the way to 2022 and, and 2023. Now moving on in terms of the next news and now talking about the reports and actually I forgot to probably talk about the biggest reports that came out of MLS in the past couple of days but I guess I'll, I'll, I'll basically put that on the next board. But for the first report that I'm going to talk about on this board is that Atlanta United is report to send Franco Escobar to Newell Old Boys on a one-year loan with an option to buy. Now, I'm kind of surprised the fact that Atlanta has decided to sell one of their best defenders down to South America because I thought Franco Escobar was decent and I thought he definitely had a, f a future true with this team. But it seemed like they decided to kind of get, get rid of him and even though technically... They only are sending him on a one-year loan because of that fact that there is an option to buy tag. Most likely, he could potentially be be gone by, the, or he, he could potentially be be signing with that team on a permanent deal. And we might have saw the last of Franco Escobar for in an Atlanta United jersey. But again, you know, this is kind of interesting. The fact that Atlanta decided to sell one of their best defender, and unless if they do have a replacement for him you know it's going to be interesting thing to see why exactly they of course decided to do that i mean i know there are some atlanta fans are not happy the fact that the team is getting rid of franco escobar and some said that they're kind of getting rid of one of their fan favorite and a guy that's been with with this team since day one when this team came in, into mls but you know we, we shall shall see maybe they have a better option in terms of the spot that Franco Escobar currently occupy and that's the reason why they decide to sell him and maybe even eventually cash in to, to get a good sum of 
of money if Noel Old Boys decide to trigger the option to buy buy Claus. Now, speaking of Alanum, uh, they also are pursuing River Plate midfielder Santiago Sosa alongside with report to be close to, to signing Argentine center back Hector Martinez. Now, uh, I'm assuming w with them getting getting Santiago Sosa from River Plate is a way for them to kind of boost their depth, even though instantly when I first saw this, I was thinking, is this kind of another one of these signings where they're kind of trying to get a, another Pity Mar Martinez into the roster? But when I look more into to this, I thought maybe this is just kind of a signings that either is going to be, be boosting their depth, and that he's probably not going to be a DP kind of player. By the way, when I look at this Atlanta United roster, they have a lot of Argentine time player, and that, you know, I, I just wonder with them signing so many of the, these foreign players, you know, how... How are they doing in terms of of the international spot? And that I I heard that that there are some people say that they could be up to to ten international you know, spot player heading into this season, and that would not not be be enough in term in terms of following the rules where you can only have a limited amount of of international spot players that is in your roster, and that they're probably eventually going to have to maybe either get rid of one of their one or two players that that occupy international spot or maybe ask them to receive a green card so that they can get rid of the international you know, uh spot spot on on their name in their roster but either way with them boosting so much international players you ju you just wonder that they need to f also think about how they only get a limited amount uh, of international players that they can s sign to their team before they might have have to think about asking a couple of their players or even let go of some of their, their players for an international spot. And actually, speaking of which, maybe that explains why Franco Escobar decided to, to leave, leave Atlanta. Maybe Atlanta is thinking that since Franco Escobar occupied one of their spots, they're thinking, yeah, we might as well just kind of get rid of him so that we can potentially bring in another international player. But that being said, again, I, I just think if they are going to get rid of a player that occupy an international spot i didn't think franco escobar was a player that that it was was one of the option for for them to get rid of to free up an international spot because as i said he was one of their best defender for this team and as i said before you don't get rid of of one of your best defender on your team and expect to can once again be a solid defensive team as was the case with atlanta last season so yeah, we shall see whether or not if both of these players is going to to basically sign with this team. Uh, I'm assuming Hector Mar Martinez is going to sign with this team because they said that they're actually getting very close and that they're going to be paid about four million dollars to actually two clubs in in Argentina, one River Plate and the second club. Uh, I actually forgot what was the name of the club, but it, but they are pay, paying a transfer fee for two separate clubs which is kind of kind of a strange or, ordeal there but i guess there must be like a clause where you know one of these clubs has like 50 percent and rights on him or the fact that there is a sell on clause where not only the fact that the the team is eventually going to sell sell him to atlanta is going to get the transfer fee but the previous team that of course have the sell sell on clause is also able to get that tra transfer fee because of of that so yeah Moving on, in terms of the next news, involved the Houston Dynamo that is reported to sign Tigres defender Carlos Salcedo. Now, this one I'm assuming is probably not going to happen because there's one, there's no way Tigres is going to sell their well their best defender Carlos Salcedo to an MLS team and expect to to, to basically ask that MLS team that is the Dynamo to pay anything less than twenty million dollar. Like, and you know the. And you know, for the Dynamo, knowing the fact that if they they are going to potentially be up to to around twenty or even thirty million dollar in order to get Carlos Salcedo, I'm pretty sure they're going to say no in terms of that option. And especially the Dynamo is not one of those teams that is known to to sign players with a ridiculous amount of fee. And also, just paying twenty million dollar for a defender and potentially making him the most expensive transfer fee and the most expensive. Sit defender in in the league and ha him occupying a dp spot yeah that does not look look good at all and that as i mentioned before one of the well the thing that 
that a lot of teams don't want to do with their DP spot is to sign one one of their DP player in the back back four. And in this case, I just think that it, it wouldn't make sense the fact that even if they're going to get a, a good defender and he could potentially be, be the best defender in MLS if he comes into this league, I just feel like the price is just too too much. And especially the fact that there's no way in the world the Dynamo is go going to... To shell out twenty and thirty million, like even probably the most the 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 most ambitious club like Atlanta or even LAFC might not even shell out twenty or thirty million dollar for a star Tigris defender because they know that they they don't want to just heavily invest that money on a single defender and that the they need to of course of course do that mostly on the attacking end. Now moving on into the last news on this board involving Minnesota United, who is reported to sign Rens striker a Adrian Hunel. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. Now he is a guy guy that, from what I heard, is a decent player for Rens, and he kind of started to kind of fell out of favor with this team, and that he's also looking to try to to move away with the team, and you know, whether or not if if. That means that he could potentially come come to the loons. We shall see how it is. And I know the European trans window has already closed, so I'm kind of interested to see how is he going to be coming to MLS if the transfer window is closed. Like the only way I could see him coming to this team is either he decided to 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 request a a trade and that Rince decided to terminate his contract and Minnesota basically sign him off of free agency or the fact that that he might have to go to another league that the transfer window has some close right now and even that how is he going to to do so if the european transfer window has already closed so yeah i, I don't know if this is gonna going to actually happen but i'm still also hoping that maybe this could happen or maybe if minnesota continue to be rumored with with sh with a couple of striker around the world market because again the number nine position alongside with, with the winger spot is a huge concern that that the loons need to address this off season because if we do not address address those issue and especially the number nine position where we only have one true number nine in forest so the dwarf as our main main striker yeah that just does not look like like a a, a good good sign that this team could could get back to the level they were last season which is reaching to the conference final but that being said i am now going to switch boards and look at some other rumors that has happened around mls so as i said before i am going to be talking about the biggest transfer rumors that happened around mls in these last couple of days and that involved pity martinez who not only is reported to come back to mls after spending a year in the middle east but he's actually potentially going to be signed with fc cincinnati and if you would have told me a couple of years ago where the reigning South America player of the year that is Pity Martinez that is going to the reigning defending champion that is Atlanta and that just two years later he would actually end up to to join a team that just won the, the wooden spoon and become the worst team in MLS. I would have think you are just completely out of your mind. But here we are in 2021 and that this could potentially be a reality and as crazy as this this rumor could be and as crazy if, if this of course could be a reality this does kind of make some sense for fc cincinnati and that in some way this could definitely be a high risk high reward situation if cincinnati decided to sign with pity martinez uh the high risk part is going to be the fact that if pity martinez signs with cincinnati he's gonna once again be playing under they're a Dutch head coach, which I'm pretty sure the last time when he played with a Dutch head coach, that of course went went well, didn't it? And then the other thing that could be a high risk is the fact that he is going to be joining a team that def definitely has a very dysfunctional you know, tactic-wise heading into this season. And I remember when he joined with Atlanta, he was also joining a team that was kind of a little bit dysfunctional in terms of the, the tactical part, and he de just doesn't really quite fit with the team and that could definitely be an issue with him if he decided to to come back to MLS and join a, a similar team that he had 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 issued to adapt in terms of the tactics wise with Atlanta but that being said the high reward with, with this is that you know maybe Pity Martinez after spending a year in the Middle East and able to get a big sum of cash he might maybe get a little bit motivated and maybe you know this could be an ex 
example of him coming back to MLS and prove that he can de definitely be a decent player and can, can prove to people that he is not considered one, if not the biggest bust, bust to ever, ever come out of South America to, to join MLS for a big sum of money. And I also mentioned earlier that FC Cincinnati ha are set to sign their main main striker Bernard, and that you know if he he and Pity Martinez link up, that could definitely be a good good dynamic dual goal forward on on the attacking end. And you know if that of course eventually work out, then all those those scoring goals and all those attacking goals that FC Cincinnati has had problem in their first two years in the league could all go away if this of course is the case but again you know this is going to be very interesting to see see whether or not if this is going to complete like again i I've, i'm still kind of kind of surprised the fact that you know not only pity martinez is coming back to mls but he would actually be linked with a team team that just won won the wooden spoon and that now, I would think that if he does come back to MLS, he might be potentially even go back to Atlanta or maybe even join one of, one of the better teams around MLS. Now, speaking of of a a player that used used to be a big big name player and that a player that I thought he actually actually decided to retire is Nacho Piatti, and there is actually the genuine rumor that he could actually be coming back to MLS even at the age of 37 and the reason why I said that I'm kind of uh, surprised the fact that that he he hasn't retired yet yet and the fact that there's literally the rumor that he's coming back to MLS is the fact that you know I, I thought he, the whole the whole reason of why he decided to go to Argentina is just to kind of finish his career and now there's actually legitimate rumor that he come back to MLS like if you are a team you know, you and you need some attacking help. Would Nacho Piatti make makes some sense to to sign him on a cheap contract? Like I'm pretty sure Piatti, if he does come back to MLS, he's not going to be be that that player that he he used to be with Montreal all the year. But he could still be a very good impact kind of player off the bench, and it'd be very interesting to see see you know with these legitimate rumor of him coming back to MLS is one going to be true. Or, or the second part is that if there's going to be an MLS team that is looking to tr try to, to maybe sign Piatti and maybe use him as, as one of their death player on the, on the attacking front. Now, Inter Miami are linked with Stoke City defender Ryan Shawcross, and I remember a couple of years ago when Stoke City was in the Premier League, uh, Ryan Shawcross was definitely one of the best defender in the the Premier League, but. That, unfortunately, was a couple of years ago. And ever since when Stoke got relegated from the Premier League and are kind of stuck in purgatory in the championship right now, yeah, Shorecross has definitely not, not been anywhere close as he, he was a couple of years ago. And the fact that Inter Miami is looking to sign a guy that is going to turn 34 this season and also have a big issue in terms of injury is definitely a little bit alarming and definitely a sign that I don't think a lot of Inter Miami fans are going to happy and you know I guess it's not surprised the fact that Inter Miami who you know they used to be linked with everybody are now linked with potentially championship type of player or players from England because you know since Phil Neville is their their head coach I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of play players that is going to try to come to Miami play not not under not only under Phil Neville but also with David Beckham, but I just feel like this signing it just does not re really make sense with the fact that Inter Miami is is one going going to potentially get older on the defensive front by signing Ryan Shawcross and two trying to get a guy that they hope that he can can be de decent and be back to his form that he was a couple of years ago even though there's just no telling sign that that of course is the case and three I don't think Inter Miami basically basically listen to the warning that Sporting KC might have given them where you know how Sporting KC decided to sign sign a an aging defender that has has injury issue in Winston Reed from West Ham yeah how did that work worked out for them I mean he was gone in lich in literally six months so yeah I, I just feel like this signing probably would would not make sense if Inter Miami is to consider that and there's definitely better op option for, for them if they want to have some defensive help now, the New York Red Bulls is reported to set to sign Cameron Harper from Celtic. Now, this is a guy that 
that is with the U.S. U-20 team and that he was trying to get some some minutes and he's trying to become one of those young Americans that is trying to get minutes in Europe and potentially maybe break into the national team but unfortunately it kind of hasn't worked out whatsoever and that he is probably looking to try to come back to MLS and you know the, the Red Bulls if he does come to the, to join that team I think it would be a decent team team for him to join because the Red Bulls have a good history of developing in young players and especially young American player and that maybe if Cameron Harper decide to come back to the Red Bulls he's going to definitely get more playing times compared to his time with Celtic and all those other teams that he's been playing in Europe right now. Now FC Dallas have made an offer for Dynamo Kiev winger Carlos De Pena and I guess this is a signing that is is a clear replacement for Michael Barrios and I'm not quite sure if he's going to be be as as decent and as pacey as what Michael Barrios was for FC Dallas but clearly they're looking to try to find a replacement for for Barrios and looking for for a winger that has a similar type of him going forward in this upcoming season uh DC United is looking to bring back Andy Andy Naha who people forget that this was a guy that used used to be be in the academy of DC United and was an academy graduate with with this team before he decided to to leave MLS and and of course he eventually come back with LAFC. Well, now it looks like DC United is looking to try to have him back. And again, I'm kind of surprised DC is is focused really heavily on their on on their defense in this off season because you know last year I don't think the defense was a, a big issue with this team. The real issue of this team is of course on the attack, attacking end. And unless if Naha can actually bring some attacking product which I don't think that is the case because he was never a decent attacker or a decent wingback for L- LAFC last season I just feel, feel like this is kind of a little bit surprised they're thinking of defensive reinforcement when their real issue right now is on the attacking end now moving on in terms of the last two news and kind of now finishing off with other news that is not transfer rumors si- signings or or co- coaching changes that that happens in these last couple of days involving the CONCACAF Champions League who is going to be having a new format in the 2023-2024 season and I will make a separate video talking about this new format because it looks like this is a format that they're going to try and to almost be be like like the UEFA Champions League where not only they're bringing back back the group stage but they are actually trying to give give chance chances to teams in the Caribbean region and even maybe in in central america to potentially be in the round of 16 now that being said i speaking of me of of the fact that that the the new format gives chance to caribbean team and central american team to more to get into into this competition that technically isn't kind of true for central american team because i know uh with the new format that they're gonna go it looked like like once we do get into to the round of 16 there's going to be more Liga MX team and MLS team that's going to be in the round of 16 than we we would ever have before and that there probably won't be as much Central American team in the round of 16 with how the format works and that probably is not is something that a lot of Central American team is not going to be happy with the way that I thought this new format was actually going to give us more chances in terms of to being competitive in in the CONCACAF Champions League and although it kind of did that with, with now more team being in the competition it only means that they're going to be in the group stage and now there's going to be fewer team that actually make it in the round of 16 but I'll kind of explain a little bit more of that once I, I made a, that separate video talking about this new format that the, that CCO is going to go go into in a couple of years. And then finally, in the last news we're going to talk about in this news of the week involving the Las Vegas Lights, who is in advance talk with LEFC to be their affiliates. Now, as much as I have heard a lot of Las Vegas Lights fans are very upset the fact that they're going to be be no longer kind of be like a community club as the Lights kind of promote themselves as kind of a community club with, with the city of Las Vegas. Uh, I just feel like this is something that they that the lights are kind of forced to have to to make. I mean, you know, we know a lot of these USL teams are kind of bleeding, bleeding for for drive because of, of the way that they they're losing a lot of revenue and especially 
Las Vegas is one of those teams that throughout the entire season last year in USL did not have fans in attendance, so they did not have that that revenue. And and if they decided to not not agree to be affiliates with LAFC, and especially what LAFC provides them, where they said that not not only the fact that we're going to be your affiliates, but we're actually going to be provide, providing housing for some of your players in LA, which that's kind of a very interesting proposal, and that is also kind of kind of, kind of a, a proposal where I wonder how the, how the players in from from the Las Vegas Lights is going to feel the fact that they have they they are going to get a chance to provide how how housing with the team, but it's not going to be in Vegas, but instead in LA. And I, I can't imagine how there's going to be some pain 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 to have to to deal with commuting commuting almost 200 miles to to Vegas if some of those players eventually does stay in the LA area but again I, I think thing besides that and also talk talk about how how the fact that the, the lights are bleeding dry, dry in terms of their revenue you know this affiliate will help them at least stabilize their the, the the revenue that they had in their team because if they are not able to accept this deal they could potentially end up the the be in the same situation that Reno 1868 find themselves, and unfortunately with Reno 1868, they eventually kind, kind, kind of uh, have to force the fold, and that you know the Quakes unfortunately were not not a team that was as nice as LAFC as a team that actually you know, offered to kind of help them in terms of their finance, and also even helped them co cover some of the ho housing housing costs that that the team had to. To pay in terms of how some of their their players on their roster so yeah i think the lights are probably going to be forced to, to accept this move they don't want to fo fold and go out of business even though i know a lot of their fans do not want to see see that happen but either way that is pretty much it for the news of the week let me know in the comments below what do you think of all these news and as always if there's any news i didn't talk about on the board let me know in the comments below but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time